We're working to connect a region of over 600 million bridges between our lands. Hello and welcome to ASEAN in Focus. I'm Marikar Velasco delivering to you the latest news in and around the ASEAN region. And now to the news. Agriculture Secretary Mani Pinon said at least 50 million pesos worth of damage to irrigation canals and dams was recorded after a 6.1 magnitude earthquake struck parts of the zone earlier this week. In a situation briefing in San Fernando, Pampanga, Pinol assured that agricultural production will not be affected following the quake. Uh, sir, uh, aside from uh, 50 million pesos worth of damage on irrigation canals and uh, dams, there's not much damage in agriculture. Uh, our production and our production targets will not be affected. Also, earlier today, sir, I talked to Governor Pineda. Uh, we have ready and standby uh, rice stocks available if uh, she would need it. Duterte, for his part, commended Pinol for keeping rice stocks on standby. The president recalled how the country encountered the delay arrival of imported rice as well as the temporary absence of national food authority rice in the market. That's one way of really controlling. Mas mabuti ang sobrang preparasyon natin. And sabi ko, sana hindi na matulong. You know, when I assumed the office. I, I had in mind uh, this thing about the rice will not uh, be a problem at all. And I must, uh, you were there and uh, you delivered a long speech. Uh, I was quite uh, confident. But really, uh, to my horror, it came. And so we had to import. Actually, I was the one who ordered uh, Jason to import. On February this year, Duterte signed the Rice Tarification Bill into law, which amends the Agricultural Tarification Act of 1996 and replaces the quantitative restrictions on rice imports with tariff. Meanwhile, the Department of Labor and Employment said it will facilitate the re-employment of employees working for Chuzon Supermarket who will be affected by the suspension of its business operations. Dole, which encouraged Chuzon employees to attend an upcoming job fair on May 1, also vowed to provide livelihood assistance for those who fail to get accepted. Duterte ordered the suspension of business operations of all Chuzon supermarkets after one of its buildings collapsed in Porak town due to the damage obtained from the quake. The Japanese government is ready to assist the Philippines should it require help, a ranking official said Wednesday. Ambassador Koji Haneda said in a statement, as the country that has been tackling with earthquakes, Japan is ready to provide assistance needed by the Philippines to the extent possible, and they sincerely wish for the early recovery of the disasters affected regions. In his message, Haneda commiserated with the families of those who perished in the aftermath of the recent earthquakes in the country. He said they would like to extend their sincere condolences to the families of the deceased and express their sympathies to all those afflicted by the recent earthquakes in Luzon and eastern Samar. Two powerful jolts rocked, or rocked the country on separate occasions. A 6.1 magnitude quake in Zambales that affected most parts of Luzon on Monday afternoon and a 6.5 magnitude tremor in eastern Samar on Tuesday. As of April 24, the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council reported that 115 structures were damaged by the two consecutive movements. A total of 16 people were killed and 86 wounded were reported in central Luzon, while at least 10 were confirmed injured in eastern Samar. The Commission on Elections on Wednesday said it is cautiously optimistic that overseas absentee voting for the May 13 midterm elections will have a high voter turnout. 
this after Comlex spokesperson James Jimenez noted that a good number of Filipinos abroad have cast their votes for the national positions during the first week of OAV. He said one Philippine post in the Middle East reported that some 1,000 people went out to cast their votes. Jimenez, however, explained that the number cannot be used as a basis to project the final figure of voters' participation. Comelec data showed that 2007 and 2013 midterm elections have only 16 percent of voter turnout. The number is lower compared to the number of voters' participation in the 2004 presidential elections with 64%, in 2010 with 26%, and in 2016 with 31%. The overseas voting period started on April 13 in a total of 83 Philippine posts abroad. Records from Comelec showed that there are 1,822,173 registered overseas voters who will be electing 12 senators and a party list group in the elections. In other news, the billionaire leader of an upstart anti-junta party which scooped up millions of votes in Thailand's disputed election last month faced fresh legal woes Tuesday after authorities accused him of illegally holding shares while running for office. Last month's poll remains in dispute after a political party backed by the Lunta that has ruled Thailand since 2014 and its main rival both claimed victory. The youth-oriented Future Forward, meanwhile, became the third most popular party in the country, garnering 6 million votes in the March 24 election. Thanks to the telegenic appeal of its billionaire leader, Tana Thorne Gruangkit, that legal assaults have trailed his success at the ballot box and could affect final results expected next month, with the election commission announcing Tuesday a fresh probe into the party chief for allegedly holding shares in a media company during the campaign. The punishment could be a disqualification for Tana Thorne and members of his party, Commission Secretary General Jarun Wit Puma told media. The decision is still not clear at the moment. Tana Thorne, who was traveling in Europe, said on Twitter that the case was political sabotage and he would return soon. He has a week to respond to the complaint. His deputy Yabutri Sain Kanokul so told reporters Monday that the shares in Vilak Media had been legally transferred in January before Thanathorn's run. He adds this issue is not a problem whatsoever. But it could wind up in Thailand's constitutional court, which experts say is highly politicized body that last month ordered a ban on an anti hunter party linked exiled Premier Thaksin Shinawatra. Thana Thorne has been hounded by cases and complaints since the election. White sandy beaches that stay cool to touch even on the hottest summer days. Blue green ocean waves and the warm ocean breeze. There's no wonder why Dr. Beaches named Siesta Key, Florida the number one beach in the United States. Don't forget to watch episodes of Digital Nest every Tuesday and Thursday at 7.30 p.m. I'm Melissa Protest coming to you from Siesta Key, Florida, and I am one with 25. Landmarks, linggo, alas 6 hanggang alas 7 ng gabi. The Sina Bata Video Festival is calling for submission of entries. With this year's theme, United in Love. If you are a Filipino video content creator, show us your best work for a chance to represent the Philippines. Deadline of submission is on August 30, 2019. For inquiries, visit or contact the following.
Welcome back. The prices of oil product products in the 2nd District of Pampanga should not increase, at least in the next 15 days, now that the area has been declared under state of calamity following the 6.1 magnitude earthquake that hit parts of Luzon late Monday afternoon. This was stressed by Energy Under Secretary and Spokesperson Felix William Puentebella in a briefing on Tuesday. He explained that the price freeze is applicable for kerosene and household liquefied petroleum gas. This means, he said, that they cannot increase prices, but if prices decline, then it should be implemented. Relatively, Trade and Industry Secretary Ramon Lopez told journalists that the price freeze is usually implemented for 60 days. Based on the initial price and supply situation reports submitted by the Department of Trade and Industry, personnel from the regions in Bataan in Region 3 alone, prices and supply of basic and prime commodities did not change and remained stable. The Department of Finance has cited the second package of the Comprehensive Tax Reform Program will expand opportunities for Japanese investors to do business in the Philippines. This is what Finance Secretary Carlos G. Dominguez III told a delegation from Kansai Economic Federation based in Osaka, Japan. During his recent meeting with Kankairin members led by its chairman Masayoshi Matsumoto, Dominguez said, they would like to point out that the economy is growing very quickly. If one wants to participate in the local economy, then one is to be invested here. He's added that they'd like to make the people feel welcome, but what will make them feel welcome is improving disposable income of the people, improving infrastructure, improving peace and order, and that he is sure many Japanese companies can certainly benefit here. Package 2 of the CTRP, which aims to cut the corporate income tax rate from 30% to 25% and eventually to 20%, as well as rationalizing fiscal incentives, is expected to help attract more investors for the country. The reduction of the CIT under Package 2, also called the Tax Reform for Attracting Better and Higher Quality Opportunities, Trabajo Bill, will make the country's CIT on a par with the other Association of Southeast Asian Nations economies. However, the Trabajo Bill is still being deliberated in Congress. Dominguez, nevertheless, remains hopeful that the bill alongside the, re the remaining three packages under the CTRP would be approved later this year. Dominguez also noted that the fiscal incentives under the tax reform program would not be removed but would instead be rationalized or improved to ensure that these are performance-based, targeted, time-bound, and transparent. He adds, rather than looking at the effect of tax reform on some companies, we should look at the effects of tax reform on the entire economy because it is making it better. Instead of looking at the, pla at the place where one might lose, one should look at the opportunities in the larger economy. Matsumoto, who is also the chairman and CEO of Sumitomo Electronic Industries, said he is very satisfied with the explanation of the finance chief about the need to rationalize fiscal incentives in the country. Dominguez explained that the country's current system of fiscal incentives, despite being the longest and most generous among the ASEAN economies, have not attracted more investors to the Philippines, which remains among the lowest recipients of foreign direct investments in the region. He also assured that Kan Keiren that the one-stop shop that Japanese investors are currently enjoying through the Philippine Economic Zone Authority would not only be retained, but would also be the norm for all business applications in the future following President Duterte's signing into law of the Ease of Doing Business Act last year. The Philippine Stock Exchange Index declined for the second day in a row Tuesday as investors await the release of latest damage reports from the 6.1 magnitude quake that hit Castellejo, Zambales and other parts of Luzon past 5 p.m. Monday. PSEI contracted by 0.17% or 13.50 points to 7,818.93 points. On the other hand, there was no trading of foreign exchange or debt papers after Malacanang suspended work in government offices in a bid to ease traffic as the country's workforce recover from quake jitters, which in turn caused the Banco Central ng Pilipinas to suspend treasury operations. 
BPI Research in a report traced the main index's performance to rise on global oil prices after West Texas Intermediate increased to six-month high of 66 U.S. dollars per barrel due to supply concerns. Also, Regina Capital Managing Director Louise Limlingan said investors have taken a cautious stance until the full extent of earthquake damages become clear. He explained value turnover remained thin and sentiment cautious just as U.S. stocks posted a muted performance on Monday as the busiest week of the corporate earnings season kicked off. All shares, on the other hand, rose 0.09% or 4.36 points to 4,839.04 points. Most of the sectors weakened during the day, namely the services, which went down 0.84%, holding firms 0.49% industrial, 0.37%, and mining and oil 0.32%. Meanwhile, property improved by 0.85%. Volume was thin at 569.4 million shares, amounting to 6.6 .6 billion pesos. Losers led gainers at 120 to 72, while 47 shares were unchanged. Events happen around us all the time, in our community, in our country, around the world. Events that affect people, move communities, or simply inspire us. Interesting events that people need to know in these interesting times. We continue to be a competent partner in delivering news about these events. Fast, accurate, balanced, eager news because we live in interesting times. Hey guys, I'm here in New Jersey, the diner capital of the world. Tune in to Digital Mess on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. I'm Nikki, and I'm one with 25. Welcome back. President Rodrigo Duterte's attendance to the Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation happening in this city this week is an opportunity for the Philippines to seek synergy and convergence with developments in the region, the Philippine envoy here said. In a press briefing Wednesday, Philippine Ambassador to China Jose Santiago Santa Romana said participating in the Belt and Road Initiative, or BRI, complements the Build, Build, Build program of the government. Santa Romana said it's a chance for the Philippines for the President Duterte to participate in this broad platform for economic development and regional cooperation. It is also an opportunity for the Philippines to seek business, e economic opportunities, new outlets for markets for their exports, new sources of foreign investment. However, the key really is the idea of connectivity, and this is what has been the factor why the president is attending. He mentioned that improving connectivity in the region is also a vision of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, which, is the, which the Philippines is a member state. More than seeking alliance, Santa Romana said, the Philippines' participation in the China-led BRI aims to boost its interaction with China and the outer countries or other countries under this platform. He said the Philippines signed as a participating country in BRI in November 2018, more than a year after Duterte attended the first one in May 2017. The envoy stressed it is for this convergence that they try to seek synergy and will promote their economic interests that will boost their economic development and ultimately that will bring benefits to the Filipino people. Santa Romana further explained that China's mechanism in identifying projects and cooperation under the BRI is different in the Philippines compared to other countries. In other countries, China and the other state designate projects under the BRI.
General Le Duc An, a Communist Party hardliner and former Vietnamese president who led the invasion of Cambodia, which led to the fall of the Khmer Rouge region, has died aged 99. Duc An, who was born in 1920, spent much of his life in southern Vietnam, where he joined the communist war effort against the French and then the United States. Duc An passed away late Monday following a long illness the government and state media announced. He served as president between 1992 to 1997, championing the continued primacy of the Communist Party as Vietnam embarked on sweeping market reforms that spurred remarkable economic growth. In 1995, he became the first Vietnamese head of state to set foot on U.S. soil after the Vietnam War when he attended the 50th anniversary of the United Nations in New York. Educated in the former Soviet Union and blind in one eye, he held various military posts during the Vietnam War. He was one of the liberators of Saigon as deputy commander of the offensive that toppled the U.S.-backed South Vietnamese government. He is best remembered for playing a commanding role in the invasion of Cambodia that drove Pol Pot's Khmer Rouge out of Phnom Penh in 1978, earning him the nickname Tiger of Cambodia. A state funeral is expected to be held for him. And that is the latest news in the Southeast Asian nation. Stay updated about the ASEAN region. I'm Marika Velasco and I am one with 25.